One Piece Chapter 822 Review. The chapter is titled, Descending the Elephant. So the first thing I want to talk about is that Momonoke is going to stay on the, which really did surprise me. So apparently Momonoke wants to stay on the and try to talk to Zunisha and find out why Zunisha will only listen to his words and didn't listen to Luffy or Chopper. I found that very interesting. Especially considering Chopper, I realized during the chapter, can talk to animals and actually realized that he wanted to talk to the elephant, but nothing much came of it. However, there were a couple other things that happened in this chapter. Nami also received a new weapon, a new version of her current climb attack. Now, Oddly enough, Usopp did say there was one thing that was missing from it that he couldn't take from the old one and put into this one. Which I found weird, I don't know what it's missing, but maybe Nami can like, use it, maybe we'll part- Oda wouldn't put that line in there unless that missing piece will come into play later. Now I want to talk about the fact that Nami only gets a new weapon when she has a big fight coming up. Usopp gave it an upgrade, they gave it the ability to grow and stretch like his green pot slingshot. Now this is very interesting because this means Nami can now not only use her weather-based attack, but she can actually hit people with the climb attack itself from a far distance. And she can control how far it stretches and how big it gets and things of that nature by how hard she squeezes it, which I find very, very interesting that Usopp was able to do this in a couple of minutes. I'm kind of surprised Frankie would have been the one to upgrade the climb attack, but I guess Usopp did build it and he probably has a much better understanding of how it works than Frankie does. Especially because as Nami proved during Alabasta, Usopp's style of making weapons is very odd. Like when Usopp first made the climb attack, he didn't just make it for fighting, it could also perform party tricks. Which Frankie probably wouldn't be able to understand how this whole thing works. But, I do want to move on to something else, and that is Pedro. So apparently Pedro, one of the minks, realized that there are no other minks going on the mission besides Peckham. And nope, and by minks he means the people of Zoe that were saved by the Straw Hat Pirates. So he tells Inarashi that it is dishonorable that none of the people of Zoe are even making an attempt to save Sanji after him, Nami, and Chopper, and Brooke saved their lives. So, Inunarashi permits him to, of course, if it's alright with Luffy, and the others join them. So, we get confirmation that the team, the Basanji Rescue Team, at this moment, consists of Cat Burglar Nami, Cotton Candy Living Chopper, Straw Hat Luffy, Peckham the Big Mom Pirate, and Piedro. Now, this is very cool, because this means we have two men, two, uh, one non fruit user, we have uh, a, a reindeer and a rubber man. I mean, this is a very interesting team we have here. I really don't know how this team will go, how well this team will work together. Nami, Chopper, and Luffy will be fine, they're their crewmates, but the rest of it, I'm not quite sure. Now, Pedro does mention uh, the tendencies of his brother, who we peck on the course, and you know, overall it's very interesting because he pretty much, it seems that he's worried Tekons will betray them, so he wants to go to make sure that doesn't happen, which I found very interesting, and I'm very excited to see where this goes. But now I want to talk about Rowan and Zoro and Law. So, now we know the team for who goes where, besides Ryzo, we don't know where Ryzo is going, and I still left that for another video. <laughs> But the point is that we know Zoro is going to go to Wano, and before Luffy left the island, he told Luffy, I will round up the samurai of Wano for you. Now, I don't me know what this means to talk to them and try to convince them to join their side, but knowing Zoro's character, I don't think so. I think Zoro is going to challenge them to a fight, and it will be under a condition like, I beat you, you join us. I lose, um, nothing happens, because I had to make Luffy, I had to help out my captain. But I thought that would be very interesting, or maybe he'll give them the, uh, the sacred sword if he wins. But if, if, they, if they win, he'll give them the sacred sword. But if he loses, then it's very possible that maybe what would happen is they would have to join the Straw Hat 
Armada, the Grand Fleet, if you will. Now, that would be a very interesting line. Law is going with Tim Tawano. So we have the two swordsmen to Wano with, let's all be honest, Wano archetype. But now I want to talk about Frankie's line. Because this line is interesting and confusing. Frankie says in this chapter he will make a weapon or weapon to combat Kaido. Now, this is a little confusing to me because there's only one weapon that Frankie could possibly make that could pose any threat to Kaido. Kaido jumps like 10,000 feet, hit the ground, and all he had was a headache. There's only one thing I can think of that would do damage to him, and that is Pluton. If you remember, Frankie, had the, Frankie, a shipwright and weapon designer, had the blueprint for Pluton for a year. So it is very possible that he could make Pluton. They could, or maybe not the actual Pluton, but make up, I guess, a weaker version or a smaller version of the ship Pluton and maybe just because we know how destructive it is because we know its destructive capability is very high maybe Pluton could be used to help the Luffy and the others defeat Kaido I'm not sure I'm just saying that is one possibility of how they could defeat him now I do want to talk about the comedy in this chapter the comedy in this chapter was amazing it was funny, there was a lot of moments that made me laugh. When, uh, Luffy went to Peckham and he called him by the wrong name, and Peckham was like, Damn it, every time we meet, we get further away from my name. What is wrong with you? And just, that had me laughing. I also loved the panel with Nami's face, which he looked down and saw Luffy's arm. I love how Nami looked terrified, but you can see a little bit of, uh, Peckham's face, and, uh, a little bit of Peck on face, I think. And I think that's Peck on. Either Peck on or Piedro, because they're mixed. But you can see the face. They're not scared. Nami looks terrified. So it's funny because you just know that Chopper and Nami are thinking he's going to jump off a cliff. And you know, everyone else is surprised. Luffy jumps off a cliff while grabbing onto to a Nami, Chopper, Peck on, and Piedro. I thought that was really good. Chopper is, Chopper is a... I have like not coming out of it though. No, Nami is crying. Piedro is just horrified, and Pekka is terrified that he's going to die. And Luffy is laughing. It was a great panel, really nice. That was so that really was funny. Especially the reaction to it when I was like, "Holy shit!" I mean, that was great, great reaction. But there isn't much else to really say about the comedy. There were some funny moments. Like when Nami stressed out the uh, climb attack and started using it, he started attacking some of the mink with it. And Usopp was like, what the hell have I done? I've released the monster. And that was great. That was really good. That had me roll. That would have me rolling. That was really funny. So yeah, there was a lot of great just moments. Uh, there was a lot of good character interaction in there. There was, there was a lot of plot advancement. But it mainly focused on the characters, and that's something I feel that One Piece had not been doing as much of since the time skip. So chapters like this are a big, very important, and a big deal to me. But you know what? I can't talk about this chapter without talking about the ending. My girl, Vivi. So I had gone on record before saying I think Vivi should have stayed with the Straw Hat. Vivi's amazing. I love Vivi. And... So this chapter, the ending of the chapter, for me, was hype. Because ever since Alabast, I've been saying, Vivi needs to reunite with a straw hat to join the crew. And this is how I think, this is what I think would happen. So we get to see Vivi at Alabast, and she's on a ship with her father. And when asked if she's in a real, if her father comments on her really good mood, she says, it's been a long time since I've been to sea. Now, during... Dressrosa, Fujitora did mention the reverie is coming up. Now, if you don't know what the reverie is, allow me to explain. If you remember way, way, way back, there was a point where we got to see Dalton, the king, uh, the king of Alabasta, Vivi's dad, I always forget his name, and a ton of other world leaders sitting. I think, I think King Riku may have been there. I could have been, I could be wrong. But we see them all sitting around like, on a table. And we see one of them hold up a pit hold up a picture of a dragon, and they're like, what are we going to do about this guy? So the reverie, in hindsight, is pretty much a meeting between some of the world powers that are unaffiliated with the world government, and some that are, 
We don't know nothing much about it. We've only seen a part of it where they talked about Dragon a little bit. And this was before he was revealed to be Luffy's dad. So all we knew was the, the guy, Dragon, he was a revolutionary and he saved Luffy's ass in Log Town. That's all we knew. But that, that is what the reverie is. You, you can always look it up if you want to know more about it. I don't really have time to go into it all. But yeah, so after the reverie is, so the theory really goes is that a lot of people are saying that DZ has to go to the reverie. Now, how would you reunite with a straw hat, you may be asking? Well, the reverie is taking place on the red line in Mary Jo's, the home of the Celestial Dragon. Yeah, which so Vivi has met Celestial Dragons. I still, that disturbed me a little bit. I feel really bad for Vivi. But the point is, is that it takes place on the red line, meaning Meaning, BD could easily have been invited to the Tea Party because she holds a tremendous amount of political power in the world because she is the Princess of Alabasta. As it even happened in real life, uh, the four of I still, I think, uh, I think, uh, Hillary Clinton went to a Donald Trump's wedding. Things like this happen. Political figures can end up at other people's weddings because of, like, money or just uh, allies and all different reasons. So it is very possible for Vivi to show up at the tea party, especially because she wouldn't need to go through any of the trouble of getting from Alabasta to the Red Line, or going into the New World the hard way. She would just go up to Mary Jo, and she could just leave and go into the New World. It would be easy. It would be as easy as it is for her as it would be for like Akainu, the fleet admiral. So she could easily get there, and if she was asked to come to the tea party, she would probably be provided by Big Mom with some kind of assistance to get there. Being, of course, Phoebe is a pirate, and let's be honest, she would not survive getting to the tea party in the new world. She would die. Now, what I'm about to say, what I hope happened, if Phoebe does show up at the tea party, and Luffy is there, I hope. And I mean, I hope. Just please forget about your duty to your country, Phoebe. Please, I really hope she joined the crew. Because this is probably the only chance Oda had to take Mimi, reintroduce her into the story, and have her join the Straw Hat permanently. Will I think this will happen? Maybe. A lot of people say we need another female character on the crew. And I'm like, okay, I'm always talking out, people are always talking out of the idea of who this character could be. I'm just like, dude, there's a chance we could have Vivi back through all these new characters. I want Vivi. That being Vivi is uh, an amazing character in my opinion. So, it is highly likely it will be Vivi. But guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of One Piece chapter 822. If I had to rate the chapter, I would give it probably a 10 out of 10. I loved it. I really can't find anything wrong with it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. And remember guys, above all else, to have a great day.